Hey everyone, Nigel and Luke here, and welcome to another edition of Crimes of the Week International. Before we get to today's video, we're excited to announce that our official Patreon page is now live. Patrons will receive exclusive extended editions of each one of our Crimes of the Week and Crimes of the Week International videos. So if you want even more crime news coverage, head over to patreon.com slash crimezone. This week, officials from the European police agency Europol announced the result of a massive coordinated operation against a criminal organization allegedly running the largest cocaine distribution network on the continent. According to a press release from the agency on September 27th, the Balkans-based crime group was composed of criminals mostly from Serbia, Croatia, Montenegro, and Slovenia, and funneled drugs from South America into Spain and then into several other European countries. The operation to take down the group began in 2018 and involved the participation of police forces in Spain, Germany, Croatia, Slovenia, Serbia, Bosnia and Herzegovina, the United States, and Colombia. The operation culminated in simultaneous raids in the Spanish cities of Tarragona, Barcelona, Girona, and Valencia in March of 2021 during which 13 people were arrested, including two kingpins of the drug smuggling operation and a police officer who had collaborated with the criminals. Since then, a further 10 people have been arrested in connection with the group, and a total of 61 are now facing charges. During the operation, authorities say they seized 2.6 metric tons of cocaine, 324 kilograms of marijuana, several luxury vehicles, and approximately 612,000 euros or 709,000 US in cash. Authorities in the Brazilian state of Minas Gerais say that a woman is in custody this week after she allegedly sent a box of poisoned chocolates and candies to her ex-boyfriend and his fiance. According to reports, the box of tainted sweets was delivered to 35-year-old Dion Carino and 27-year-old Amanda Casia Lopez on Thursday, September 23rd, at their home in the city of Jaiba. Because the couple was set to be married that weekend, they thought nothing of it, and soon began eating and sharing the treats, assuming that they were simply an early wedding present. However, shortly after consuming the box of candy and chocolate, it was clear that something was wrong as everyone who ate from the box began to fall seriously ill. In addition to the bride and groom-to-be, three other family members, including a two-year-old child, needed to be hospitalized. Thankfully, all of them survived. However, sadly, the family dog, who was also given a little bit of the candy, later died. After speaking with the victims and other family members, it didn't take long for investigators to come up with a suspect, the groom's ex-girlfriend. She was reportedly never able to accept that the relationship was over or that her former boyfriend had found love with someone else. Though no additional information has been released about the woman, reports say that she was arrested at her home the day after the suspected poisoning incident and remains in police custody. At the current time, authorities are reviewing surveillance footage in the area, have conducted a search of the woman's house, and are still trying to determine what poison was used in the alleged attack. The situation remains under investigation. Authorities in South Africa's northwest province say that a 44-year-old man is in custody this week after he allegedly murdered his girlfriend. According to reports, Christopher Coquetso Molore killed 38-year-old Shegofatso Mabebe on September 27th after finding her with another man the previous night. Police allege that upon making the discovery, Malore grabbed Mabebe, assaulted her, and forcibly removed her from the home where she was that night. The next day, Mabebe's lifeless body was found with multiple head injuries lying in the street in the town of Tong. What makes the story even more chilling was that Malore was out on parole for another murder at the time of this incident. He previously served eight years for the murder of his 34-year-old girlfriend, Babuang Rumose, in December of 2009. 
At the time of this recording, Malore remains in police custody while the investigation into this week's murder continues. His next court appearance is scheduled for October 6th. Authorities in the Japanese city of Yokohama say that they recently made quite the disturbing discovery following a car accident involving a cyclist and a 76-year-old motorist. According to reports, the incident took place on September 28th, when the elderly driver, a man named Katsushi Abe, collided with a female cyclist at an intersection. Though thankfully the woman only sustained minor injuries from the crash and no one else was hurt, things soon took a shocking turn. When questioned by police about why he didn't have his driver's license on him, Abe admitted that he didn't have one at all, and apparently hadn't for roughly 50 years. He said that his license had been confiscated sometime in his 20s, leading police to suspect that he had been driving unlicensed this entire time. They also say that they haven't even been able to confirm that he ever had a license, as no records have so far been found. Abe was arrested at the scene on charges of dangerous driving resulting in injury and driving without a license. Authorities in the Australian state of New South Wales say that they are on the lookout for a mystery vandal this week after a senseless crime spree left nearly three dozen vehicles with thousands of dollars worth of damage. According to reports, the crimes took place in two separate incidents between the night of September 25th and the morning of September 26th in the town of Tamworth. They began when the suspect first broke into a luxury car dealership just before midnight puncturing the tires of 17 vehicles and causing $30,000 worth of damage. It's believed that the suspect then moved on to a street in North Tamworth sometime before 9.30 a.m. that morning and vandalized more vehicles. At least 15 additional cars that had been left parked on the street overnight were found with their tires slashed, amounting to another $12,000 worth of damage. Police have since released an image of the man who they want to speak with regarding the incidents, who was captured walking in the area. It's unclear if police believe that he is the suspect, or if he was simply a witness to the crimes. Anyone with information about the tire slashings is being asked to contact Tamworth Police or Crime Stoppers. Authorities in the English county of Northumberland say that a feud between neighbors significantly escalated and resulted in the arrest of a 34-year-old man this week after a couple was apparently shot at with an air gun while erecting a wooden fence. According to reports, the whole thing first started when 50-year-old Christine Williams and her 57-year-old husband Stephen decided to close their sweet shop in Annick in 2019. The couple wanted to make a career change, but opted to keep the property, which they owned, and convert the entire space to become part of their house. This meant that the old storefront was now their living room. Apparently, things were mostly okay until 2020, when new restrictions started to cause problems with their next door neighbors, a fish and chip shop directly connected to their home. The Williams say that the trouble began when the owner of the restaurant began putting marks on the pavement onto their side of the property so his customers could line up. The Williams felt that this was entirely unnecessary because the business could easily have set up the line to go the opposite way onto their own property and that they had a spacious parking lot that could have easily accommodated it. The couple responded by washing the marks that the fish and chip shop had put on their side of the property for the lineup. However, this only increased tensions between the neighbors. It also apparently didn't stop the fish and chip shop's customers from lining up outside the Williams' house, right in front of their living room window. Recently, the Williams decided to take things a step further and began constructing a four-foot-high wooden fence completely around the front of their property to stop people from standing there. They claim that they had every right to do so, as the property belongs to them, and that this had been legally acknowledged during a previous incident with an internet broadband company that wanted to rip up the pavement in front of their building in 2017. The fence was not only unpopular with the fish and chip shop owner, but apparently angered many of the business's customers as well. Things finally came to a head on the evening of September 23rd, 
when one angry local decided to threaten the Williams by showing up at their property with an air gun. The 34-year-old man reportedly pointed it at Christine and Stephen and fired one shot, which missed them and hit their wall. The man was subsequently arrested by police, though reports contradict each other as to whether he remains in custody or has since been released. According to the Williams, when the man fired the shot at them, the sounds of cheering could be heard from within the fish and chip shop. The drama did not end there, though, as the following day, representatives from the town council came and tore the wooden fence down. The Williams claim that they are now locked in a dispute with officials, who say that they have yet to make a determination about the legality of their fence. Regardless, Stephen and Christine say that they plan to put it right back up. Authorities in the Indian state of Uttar Pradesh say that a man has been arrested this week after he was accused of murdering his young daughter and trying to frame his wife for the crime. According to reports, Muzamal Shamid married his wife Shabnam in 2010. However, four years later, he decided he wanted to end the relationship and gave his wife talaq, one of the ways that a husband may divorce his wife under traditional Islamic law. Though Shamad remarried, Shabnam reportedly refused to leave the house and said that their marriage had not been properly ended. In the ensuing years, Shamad allegedly tried a few different shady tactics to get Shabnam to leave him, but none of them worked. He then came up with a truly heinous idea. In early September, Shamad reportedly met with his brother Madasser and his neighbor Amir, and the three concocted a plan to kill Shamad's seven-year-old daughter and frame Shabnam. The men carried out the crime on September 19th, while Shamad was in Delhi to avert suspicion. The young girl was beaten with a hammer and her throat was slashed, killing her. This horrific plan apparently fooled no one, and police soon arrested all three men involved in the murder. The neighbor, Amir, was reportedly paid in two days worth of alcohol and 8,000 rupees, or roughly $107, for his part in the crime. The three men have now been charged with murder and criminal conspiracy, along with several other offenses. Authorities in the Ecuadorian port city of Guayaquil say that at least 116 people are dead this week following a massive gang war at a local prison. According to reports, the incident began on September 28th at the Guayas prison complex also known as the Litoral Penitentiary. It started when inmates from one wing of the prison managed to crawl through a hole to gain access to another wing, where they attacked rival gang members. The violence quickly reached chilling levels, with at least six prisoners allegedly beheaded, while others were shot or killed with grenades. Around 400 police officers were sent into the prison amid the chaos, and eventually they were able to get the situation under control. The officers were able to free six prison cooks who were trapped during the fighting, and apparently only two officers sustained injuries. Twenty-four bodies were found at that time. Though police managed to maintain order for a while, it appears as though they left prematurely, as violence broke out once again overnight leading into the 29th. This time, police were forced to go through the prison wings one by one, and the death toll reached a staggering 116. As of Thursday morning, local media reported that more gunfire and explosions could be heard at the prison complex. Because the victims appear to be exclusively inmates at this point, authorities have concluded that this week's terrifying events are the result of a gang war rather than a prison uprising. It comes at a time when powerful Mexican drug organizations like the Sinaloa Cartel and the Jalisco New Generation continue to make inroads with Ecuadorian gangs as they fight for superiority along South American drug smuggling routes. While this week's gang war is the deadliest of its kind to take place in the Ecuadorian prison system, it's hardly unprecedented. According to reports, numerous deadly confrontations between rival gangs have taken place over the past year. In February, 79 people were killed in simultaneous fights across four different prisons, one of which was the Litoral Penitentiary. Authorities say that numerous factors are behind the increasing violence in the country's prisons, including the fact that inmates are more heavily armed than ever due to smuggling. 
Officials say that they lack the resources to properly patrol these facilities, and that overcrowding makes this even more difficult. At the time of this recording, the situation is ongoing. That brings us to the end of this edition of Crimes of the Week International. If you're a fan of the new series, don't forget to tell us in the comment section below. While you're there, make sure to subscribe to Crime Zone for more true crime content like this, making sure to hit the notification bell to stay up to date with our latest videos. Thank you for watching.